Okay, welcome to the very last class that we're going to look at within the phylum Echinodermata, and that is the class Crinoidea. So the crinoids are things called feather stars, which you will find at uh, places like the mushroom rocks at Mare Island and shallow water, but the sea lilies are generally um, restricted to quite deep water, more than 100 meters. They used to be very prevalent at one time, but they've been mostly outcompeted in, uh, in shallower waters, so they're restricted to deep waters. Uh, especially the uh, sea lilies. So these are mostly in deep water, and this is the only class where the mouth and the ambulacral groove face upwards. So they're very much like a um, brittle star or a basket star, but they have an ambulacral groove and the mouth faces upwards. So their central disc also is known as a calyx. So there's the word calyx. Okay. And here's what you're probably going to see um, up around the mushroom rocks at Mayor Island is a good place. And a lot of these at the Alderman. They tend to be found in um, uh, very clean waves in nooks and crannies in sort of wave-swept environments. Um, and so they, they tend to like the, uh, uh, a slightly more settled environment, but one with a lot of water flow. Here's one uh, very common around the, the British Isles. And you can see the oral surface here, or the oral cavity there. But that's the top facing up. The oral side faces up. Here is what you call a sea lily. And notice that this one is on a stalk. So the stalk, it doesn't really move ever, uh, much like others, unlike other starfish. Um, and other animals in the phylum Echinodermata is attached, and so these things face into the current. The, the arms face into the current, and they just filter out food that is swept past. And they tend to be in very deep water. Okay, sea lilies, only 80 species known, all living greater than 100 meters, uh, and feather star stars, which live in shallower water. So they've got the attachment stalk and a body called the crown, the attachment stalk and the sea lilies. Um, and the fossil ones, they've had stalks over 20 meters long. That's a big, uh, long stalk, big animal. Uh, here's, what, here's a nice fossil of a sea lily. Okay, and you can see the arms, they're all bunched up. All right, so as we said, the sea lilies have a stalk and the feather stars don't. Um, they have uh, this crown, which is anywhere from 10 to 200 arms. All right, so it's very similar to a uh, feeding basket star, but these appendages, these arms, they're, they're actually jointed appendages. All right, um, and the, they also have these other jointed appendages. It's a separate group of arms that face the other way around the, uh, the central uh, part of the body, the calyx, and that is for grasping the substrate. Let's have a quick, quick look. So here are the, uh, the Siri, which is the separate set of arms that grasp the substrate and they can walk around on these jointed appendages. There are other jointed appendages, the arms, okay, uh, unlike the basket stars, or brittle stars, which have uh, segmented appendages but not jointed. These ones um, have little joints so they can fold up quite easily. And then they have all these uh, little pinules, which are the lateral uh, appendages that come up and gather food. The central body is called the calyx. Okay, that's, and the mouth, of course, faces upwards. Um, okay, so on the arm, they have podia, which do the same job as the um, basket stars or brittle stars. But these ones are actually in an ambulacral groove, and they have these little flaps called lappets, which go over the ambulacral groove. And then the uh, podia can, can 
uh, come out of those the ambulacral groove once the when the lappets are pulled back. Uh, they are filter feeders, and they uh, essentially feed just like um, basket stars by gathering particles on mucus and then taking it to the mouth. All right, here we go. We see some uh, really nice drawings of the close-ups of the animals. And you can see the little lappets and the ambulacral groove that are going along. So these little lappets, they are um, the coverings, much like the ambulacral spines in the, uh, in the asteroidians. Um, there we go. They've got a, a two-way gut. They don't have a mouth and an anus. Okay, they're only echinoderm class that has the oral side facing away from the substrate, as we've said, and the anus is also located on the oral surface. Um, they can't move if they're sea lilies because they're attached, and feather stars can crawl and swim, uh, but mostly stay in one place. Often you'll find their, uh, their calyxes down within a crack or a crevice in the in the substrate in the rocky shore and only the arms stick out. Dioecious, okay, dioecious male or female. Um, they mostly broadcast spawn and but some brood their eggs and the feather star and the sea lilies look very similar in the, in the larval stage which we'll have a look at just out of interest in a second. Um, and they are capable of casting off the arms and regenerating lost parts. So these are very good at a regeneration, very much like the other echinoderms. And just lastly, out of interest, I thought you might like to see a picture of the um, larval stage of these uh, these crinoids. And they look up very very much like a planula, except that they've got lots and lots of these ciliated rows. Uh, to help them move along, find a place to settle, and then metamorph metamorphose into adults.